Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Bachelor Universe Podcast, Episode 6. So we are almost halfway through the season of The Bachelor, and tonight I have a special (laughs) guest joining me right here on the podcast, none other than the coach from Andy's season, Brian Osborne. Brian, say hi to everyone. What's up, guys? (laughs) Brian, so glad to have you on. What an episode did we see tonight, huh? That was something. Hey, it's a pleasure to be honest with you, Jim, and uh, tonight's episode was a doozy, let's just say that. Yeah, the last two episodes have really cranked it up, and really things have been changing in the house from mellow to to the amped up level. So, uh, basically we start off uh, where the last lep- episode left off, which was Kelsey crying and having a panic <laughs> attack on the ground, you know, and then we got yeah. the to be continued. There was no elimination last week. And we start off with Kelsey crying on the ground still and and whining, but clearly she didn't take it that hard because she bounced up in a few seconds and she was fine, seemingly. Yeah, you know what? My first initial uh, reaction to Kelsey is like, this girl just, she's got one-liners for days. And Mm -hmm. and her her one-liners lead to like ridiculous comments about the girls and those ridiculous comments about the girls lead to panic attacks and <laughs> yeah it kind of goes in the <laughs> circle of life right oh god it's it's ridiculous and i mean the, the best way to sum up this this girl and to be honest jim this is the mm-hmm. first thing that came to my mind when i saw this episode was this girl is gone girl crazy that's i totaled she my is, last she's, block she's insane I, I titled, you know, I went with my last blog. I I called it uh, Fifty Shades, uh, Fifty Shades of Gone Girl, starring Kelsey. So uh, she will de- definitely Rosemond Pike might get an Oscar, but Kelsey is taking her role in the second part of that movie. Happens. So. I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more. I could not. Yeah, I mean, you know, the crazy part is that I picked when the first uh, premiere aired. I honestly picked her to be Chris's potential wife. I really thought the way they set it up, uh, you know, they had the little vignettes of her and the promo, and she was like this, you know, athletic girl that's a teacher, and, you know, she she had the whole thing with her husband happened. You felt like, wow, this girl, and you know, she's been married, so she's had that experience, and um, that might be a woman that's ready to settle down and has been through a tragic past, you know, and I just did not see this coming. I don't think anyone did. Yeah. She uh, she has a story, and she obviously has the personality for the camera. Um, you can tell she's a guidance counselor. She knows how to like manipulate, and she knows how to like get things going her way. And um, I, you know, I, like, I don't want to like completely come down on her because you, you never know what kind of uh, clips are taken from each sure. interview, so you don't know what she's saying uh, entirely, but. Um, there's only so much editing that can happen, mm-hmm. <laughs> so e- everything else is, is real life, true stuff, and um, I believe every word Kelsey says, and it scares the living crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so do I, I mean, in a sense, you know, it, when she was talking on tonight's episode, it felt like, even when she was talking with Chris, it felt like she was almost talking to a student, you know, like that composed and like mellow, but yet very authoritative uh, way she was talking, you know, it was just creeping oh. me out in the sense like, whoa, this is so calculated. 
And the part where uh, she confronted Ashley on the bed and saying, I know what you did. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I feel like she's talking to one of her like bad students who just like flushed a bomb down the toilet or something. Like it's just I, I completely agree. That's how I got that feeling too. And I had Ashley running did it right away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the show started off with, with that, uh, obviously, you know, the tending to Kelsey, and then we were proceeded to a trip, a trip, uh, a trip to South Dakota, of all places. <laughs> I mean, you know, one thing Chris has got right, we don't have France here like you guys did, and all these exotic places. This is, this is Chris, I can tell you, you know, you know him better than anyone, but this is yeah. very much up his alley, all these places that they're going to. And it's great in a sense because that's the similar life that you're going to be living with him, you know, to in these country type of places, these beautiful places, but you know, this subtle type of lifestyle. Yeah, and, and I think what they did and what production did was they focused on life after the show and what mm-hmm. it, what, it, what it's going to be like. And if Andy ended up with any one of us, it wasn't going to be that that important to the girl as much as this season is. Uh, because Chris isn't going to move. Like that, right. That's his life in Iowa. He's there. He's going to be there for the rest of his life. So the, they're kind of like grooming the girls to, to get used to that scenario and that environment. Um, but man, like, <laughs> these these towns are just, they just, they creep me out. They really do. You know what they look? They look like a Hollywood <laughs> set. Like a Hollywood set of like a South Dakota. You don't know if it's an actual town, but it might yeah. be. It yeah. is, technically. Yeah. It, you, know, you don't know. You don't know if the streets behind the buildings are like a wall, when, right? Like it's like it's Truman Show esque, but it's, in the pure desert behind you, you know that yeah, type of yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. But but you know, Chris seems to have a great time there too, and and it really kind of gives you an idea, and for him probably too, like how these girls take up uh, take to it. You know, if some of them are immediately turned off and just want to get out of there, then you know that's something to think about going forward. Um, oh, without a doubt, and I think that's the first thing that kind of that was a red flag for me about Kelsey is when she went on that group date to the lake she was mm-hmm. complaining about the scenario and in my head and I'm actually at that point I'm yelling at the TV I'm like girl you don't understand what is in Iowa they were <laughs> like in California yeah, they were in California by a lake you know it's completely different yeah you and, are like the, t- the classiest of the lakes possible. If you go to Arlington, Iowa, like it's it's a completely different world. Oh, no question about it. Yeah. And uh, then we basically had a tonight was a special two on one dates. So two people, two girls would go on a date, and one of them's not coming out. That was the yeah. setup going into it. Uh, the group date, uh, there was a group date also, uh, which saw, and I was thinking in a sense that it, it, they were promoting in a sense, I was hoping it wasn't Jade versus um, yeah. Britt, in a, they were kind of setting that up, because uh, that, that would have been two heavy favorites uh, yeah. going at it together, and I think Jade's really grown over the past few episodes, um, she's really kind of made a rise, and, and Chris has taken notice to her finally. Yeah, and, and I actually got the... Uh, the opportunity to meet Jade in person uh, before the premiere when we were out there uh, for the red carpet premiere. Mm-hmm. She's a sweetheart. She's a, oh my God, she's one of the nicest girls I've ever met. Um, so now seeing her on the show, she hasn't changed one bit. So it, it, it's kind of cool for me to meet her before the season even started. So I know exactly how she is on and off camera and it's fantastic. And you know what? I, I felt bad for the group date because it, they kind of like hyped up the two on one, and then they mm-hmm. they did the the whole like beginning panic attack. So uh, all those girls on the group date were were some of my favorites, and I think um, they're all sweet sweethearts. And I just felt bad the scenario, and I don't think it's Chris's fault entirely uh, with the whole concert and taking Brit there but yeah I, I felt bad for the girls back at the bar man that's that's a really really tough situation to be in like I feel like I had it hard watching Nick walk off in Belgium on that group date and yeah that's what I was thinking day. about too that was very reminiscent of it <laughs> this was on a whole different level man I felt really bad and especially since they know that Brit isn't very country you know for her to get that uh, that date, you know, to go on that and yeah. be on stage, that's a special feeling for any girl, too, you know, there's a different mindset for a girl to be, you know, surrounded by all these people on a stage, on a concert, you know, it's a special feeling for anyone, and I'm sure they were missing out on it. One thing uh, to go back on, I was really glad to see Becca finally get a one-on-one. 
Yeah. I, I think you she, know, I, I really like Becca. I think she's a great girl. I think she's genuine. And I think the best thing that she's doing right now is she's taking her time. And she's not... She's not doing exactly what the other girls are doing. She's not giving in to the oh, let me kiss Chris first. Oh, let me mm-hmm. share my sad, let me share my virgin story. Let me share my, a sad story. She's she's got her own script, and I think that's fantastic. She's going at her own pace. You know, yeah. she's not forcing anything. She's genuinely being herself. She's not she's not trying to jump over anyone. And I think. I think that's something to be said for that, to be appreciated. You know, that she's true to herself and knows who she is. You know, and that's... And remember, the first night, Chris, probably... That was the biggest impression anyone made when she came out in that dress from the limo. That was one girl that everyone was threatened by initially. You know, oh, just by her look. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And yeah. I, think, I think you said it perfectly with saying that she's going at her own pace. And I, I think that's the biggest thing that any contestant can focus on is you go at your own pace and as soon as you give in to everybody else's pace that's when you that's when you kind of like steer away from who you are as a person and um you can see that as like ashley i has yeah. completely gone like in orbit um but many times it, yeah, many times. I mean, her tears could fill the Staples Center. I said tonight on, on Twitter, and I think that's <laughs> that, that is true. But I think I think Becca has grown in this episode, and I think Jade did too as well. So mm-hmm. I think there's a few girls that are, are sticking out to me. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think these are the two girls that are really actually that been quiet. But I think one thing about Chris is we know Chris is here for the right reasons. There's no denying anything about that. And I think he appreciates someone that really is enforcing things is kind of being themselves. I mean, we don't see everything. We just see two hours per week. You know, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. And you know that yourself. And I'm sure he's noticing them, you know, that they're being themselves. And they're, you know, maybe not those type of people, you know, personality-wise, are very aggressive and stuff, but yet have a lot to offer. Yeah, and I think what you just said is uh, is so true. Is I think the one thing that viewers should understand is that Chris has taken this so serious. I was I was in Arlington. I visited him for a weekend the week before he left, um, and we had some great conversations. And mm-hmm. the one thing he said to me, he goes, he's, he's like, Bri, like, I'm – you don't understand that I'm taking this as serious as I possibly can. You've been in Iowa for, for three days so far. You know exactly how hard it is to find someone that you can end up with. And um, he's like, I, I'm not joking around with this. And uh, you, you should know when you go home and you should know that like, God, my heart is completely in this. And I felt like I, I honestly felt that from him and mm-hmm. watching him so far, I, I feel so bad because he got a really, he got a tough crowd, but I think there's yeah. some, I think there's some girls in there and, and I know I know Chris as, as as best as anybody else, and I think there's some girls in there that could absolutely be that perfect girl for him. Yeah, and you know what? And I just kind of, I've been noticing that. And tonight, Whitney actually mentioned that she would be a wife, and she could do those things with Chris. And I think that's one girl that definitely is in it for the right reasons. And you know, wouldn't mind that type of lifestyle. She's from Kentucky, uh, and you can tell that she's serious about it. And some of these girls are, you know, rising now. The cream to the crop is coming up in a sense that, you know, and, and I think Chris has done a great job so far keeping the right girls around. You know, obviously he doesn't see what happens behind the scenes and in the house. He's not there. But I think he's got a good pulse on what's going on. You know, he's going with his gut, I think, on a majority of these calls. And so far, it's been pretty good, you know, uh, that that he's picked, with, uh, gone with so far. Yeah, and I, I can look at it, and um, I can obviously tell he's, he's done a great job at, at filtering out the ones that aren't there for the right reasons mm-hmm. or just would not cater to his needs. Um, and I and I saw those the girls that were in that room tonight at the end of the episode. I look at all of them. I'm like, these are all are absolutely fantastic girls. I mm-hmm. can't I can't complain with the with the crowd that he has going going forward. And um, I've gotten to know Jade. I've gotten to know uh, Caitlin. They're they're fantastic. And um, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, I I think it. Now we're getting to a point where a lot of these girls that you thought they're not right for him, they were kind of gone. Chris did a great job of eliminating the, the ones that went after Jack Daniels after the bottle. You know, those girls didn't last very long. Uh, but I, I think he's taking his time, like you said, and it is going about it the right way. And, um, you know, just going with his gut. And that's all you could do. 
Uh, yeah, and, and I, I said something on, on Twitter tonight, and, and I really mean it, when um, after that group date, and I saw the girls, they're all devastated, being in the bar, and watching Brent come back, and it just being awkward, and how their feelings are towards the whole situation, and um, <laughs> people don't understand watching this, how mentally tough you have to be for, for as long as it takes, like, whether it's two weeks, you're on for two weeks, whether you're on for five and a half weeks, like I was on, like it, it just, it, every scenario, they, they test your ability mm-hmm. um, even further every time. And, and it got to a point where um, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. And I had to confront and I had to like get my feelings out. And that's what happened in Belgium. Yeah. But, uh, it, like I fell for those girls when I saw them devastated. When Caitlin said like, it's just humiliating. It, it can be. And, you come home after this whole thing, you come home, you're like, wow, I've completely, I found out so much more about myself than I could possibly imagine. And, uh, oh, yeah, I, it, it's, it's a learning incredible. experience, you know, oh, and it God. tests your, it tests your will in a sense, you know, what things are you willing to do and just how far will you go, you know, because this is a one, people don't realize what kind of a rare opportunity this is in a sense that, <laughs> you know, not only you're on TV and, and all that, but you know, potentially could honestly meet your next future wife. And it's happened before. You know, we have Des and Chris and and Catherine and Sean. I mean, it's happened. So this is a potentially a life-altering, you know, time of your life. And yeah. and it's it's definitely not your standard way of going about it. You know, you have like 20 women or 20 guys to go about it. Yeah. But And I think you did a great job with it too. And Chris and Marcus, I, I sense from your season, is that you guys and Dylan too were just very honest and were yourself. You never changed. You never, you know, went too high or too low. I think you just paced it and then – you know, did and it's not easy for some people to open up either. You know, and add cameras in front of you. I can't even imagine what that's like. But yeah, you, the key it's, to it's this pretty is intense. it's being yourself. I think ultimately what wins out. And if someone wants you, they're going to want you for who you are. Yeah, and it, it's exactly what you just said, Jim. Is is you have to be yourself regardless of what situations you're dealt with. Like. I always, I always com- compare it to basketball. Always, mm-hmm. all the guys made fun of me because I did so many sports references <laughs> on the show. But I said it's like you have an, you have your game, and you, your game plan uh, at the start of the game should be the same way at the end, regardless if you're down twenty or you're up twenty. That should be the same thing the whole time. And as soon as you veer away from your game plan, it, it like it could really like make or break you. And uh, you can mm-hmm. tell by some of these girls that they're dealing with it. Um, it Really hardly, and then mm-hmm. I feel I feel I feel really bad for him because I, I I've been in their shoes, and um, so I, I I hope the best for some of them, and and I have my favorites. I'm not going to reveal them, but uh, <laughs> I maybe maybe give it away a little earlier. But uh, um, I, I just I can just tell the kind of girls that are the same way on camera than they are off, and like there's a reason why I was I'm to this day I'm really good friends with Chris, Dylan, Josh, and. Um, Marcus, I think. It's, it's, it's kind of Marcus. Mm-hmm. Marcus and I kind of like butt heads, but um, Dylan, Chris, and I were the same way on camera than we were off. And uh, the time, and I can tell by all the girls the reactions to Kelsey or Britt is how they see them off camera. And right. We see them on camera. And when us guys, when we're off camera, the show was never part of our conversation we talked about our families we talked about our beliefs we talked about what's important to us and we got to know each other and Mm -hmm. i think that's the ultimate thing if if you don't end up that person at the end you want to you want to really look at that person who wins if you're losing if you lose you want to look at that person that wins be like you know what i got to know that person he's fantastic or Mm -hmm. she's fantastic and i think some of these girls are having that doubt now about about the other girls so it's it's going to be interesting next next week, too. And, you know, that's what I appreciate about Whitney last week, actually, when Jordan came back. You know, obviously no one wants another person, you know, in the house after they've been eliminated. But she was – she took it a very classy way, you know, and she left yeah. it up to Chris to decide yeah. that. And I think that showed her character, too, that, you know, she's confident in herself – and who she is, but also isn't going to sabotage someone or, you know, for je- let jealousy overtake her better judgment, you know, and I thought that really showed her in a positive light uh, last week, which, which she said, uh, regarding certain girls who just, like, go into panic mode over that. Yeah, and, and you can tell um, 
when those situations happen, whether it's Jordan coming back or it's uh, Kelsey with her comments or Britt being taken off by Chris, you can tell who's real and who's not by mm-hmm. who's be, who's getting interviewed right after it happens. Right. The people the people that aren't real and who aren't like genuine and normal are the one or the ones that are being interviewed or who have comments about it. You can tell last week when Jordan showed up, Whitney was the only one who had a comment about it. Mm-hmm. It was it was Ashley I, it was Kelsey, it right. was all those all those I mean white I mean straight jacket girls that that I'm calling this week, but um, that, that's always interesting. It, being on this side, I always look to see who's making comments after kind of some like something mm-hmm. stirs the, stirs the pot, and it's always the people that you uh, uh, you kind of expected it from. So. Yeah, it's it's very you have that repeated group as you mentioned. Yeah, uh, that kind of sticks out all the time, and you know the ones that are actually the quiet ones, the ones that don't get that much camera time, they're the ones I feel are the most genuine because they're not trying to come up with something. Like you said, Kelsey's got lines for days, you know, lined up in in her. And I'm still surprised. It's still shocking to me that I didn't expect her to turn out that way. Of all the girls, (laughs) you know, she just didn't look the part (laughs) for that. Guidance counselor should have been a red flag. (laughs) Possibly. (laughs) Possibly, yeah. I mean, in that sense. Yeah, and I think it's exactly what you said. Um, like, Ashley I, virgin, Becca, virgin. We heard more, totally more different. about it from Ashley I than we heard Becca. And that's what made me kind of, like, veer towards Becca's side. I'm like, she's actually, she's 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 here, but that's not a focus point of, of why she's here. It's, it's not it's part a of her of hers, and it's story, she's you know? proud of. Yeah, it's not her story. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. Some of these girls have crazy stories, and it's it's ridiculous. It really does. and But you know what? Everyone's got a story in a sense, too. But um, like Becca even mentioned, she has a story, but they aren't pushing it on. You know, they, they want to keep it maybe to Chris one-on-one and not just, like, let the cameras know all about it yeah. um, in that sense. So uh, going back to that, the, the two-on-one, that big date tonight, <laughs> the, where shit. everything was setting up towards, they kind sure. of blew out all the, what'd you think about the, the concert, I mean, the girls individually singing the songs, obviously Chris needs some vocal lessons in a sense, yeah, Chris, Chris, but, Chris is, Chris is as good singing country as I am singing boys to men, let's just say that, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> it's not something to be proud of, I, you know, I was very impressed with Carly, I was impressed with Whitney, mm-hmm. I was impressed with uh, um, Jade. Caitlin cracked me up. I think it was hysterical how all the other girls did these heartfelt, slow country songs, and Caitlin came out hot with the, yeah, with the rap. Yeah, with a country hysterical. rap. That's what, I guess that was what it was. Yeah, that girl can crack me up. She's hysterical. And I think that's what Chris is noticing about her, too, that how, how spunky she is and how, like, lively. You know, she's got a lot of life to yeah. her, uh, and obviously she's easy on the eyes. No question yeah. about it. You know, that's one girl is just smoking hot. Yeah, yeah, she, she's very easy on the eyes, but, uh, like, God, her humor makes her ten times hotter, I think. She's, mm-hmm. she's, fanta- she's fantastic. Yeah, and she's one of those girls that I, she can handle, like, that day when Jimmy Kimmel was on, you know, and he was playing, like, Only Caitlyn could deal with that. Right. Only Caitlyn could have handled that. That was the perfect person in that situation, because if it was <laughs> Carly or, some, uh, or someone else, it would have been, like, crying, and you don't know what it would have turned exactly. into. Chris felt exactly. awkward. Chris was more awkward than Caitlyn, you know, feeling more like yeah. sh- sad and ashamed in a sense than <laughs> she did about yeah, it. Yeah, I was I was very impressed with the girls with the with the singing, mm-hmm. um, and I know how hard it is. They sang in front of maybe twenty people. Yeah, <laughs> we sing in front of thousands of people. So it's, with boys too I, much. I, 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 yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to feel sorry for you because it's listen. I can't sing with anything, so I. Um, I was kind of jealous of them, but uh, it looked like they were having a good time, and they yeah. kind of ran with it, and um, I thought it was kind of weird how, I don't know which one of them, big or rich, I'm not a huge country fan, but mm-hmm. who, whoever ran off with Jade down the street, I thought that was just like really awkward. I didn't know what he was taking her, I thought they were going to go into like a exactly. one-on-one or something, you know, it was going to turn into a date. I thought he was going to take her and then like present her with the rose and the all of a sudden, Jade is out of the contest. <laughs> yeah, Jade is taken officially, so one less. This, yeah. no, it, it was kind of odd, but I guess it worked for her. It seemed like it did. It brought so, her out of her shell. 
and guess she that? is she is honestly a, mm-hmm. a, a very big sweetheart she when i met her uh we we didn't even talk about the shows like my show or her show we just like, kind of got to know each other it was it was pretty cool it was a brief moment we ran into each other mm-hmm. i ran into her amber and and sam um at a nightclub in in, in la and um, had a good conversation, but it was pretty cool to see her up on stage singing after meeting her. So I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking great. of Sam, you just mentioned Sam. She finally got eliminated tonight. <laughs> I said it tonight on Twitter. I said, I feel like everybody right now is staring at the screen saying, why who? Are, how, who, who are these girls? Like, yes. what are they still doing here? I mean, Sam, every week when I wrote a blog article, I was just like, who? Uh, okay, you know, she. I, I'm, I'm not sure how much time Chris got with her, but I feel like she was a really nice girl from the brief moments we saw from her, uh, too. I wish we kind of got to know her a little bit more, just, you know, on camera, and, and the cameras focus more on her, in a sense, at some point. Yeah, I, I mean, she reminded me of Christy from one Pablo season. That, mm-hmm. I mean, she made she made it kind of far, but had no camera time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was actually I think she made it like twice as far as Christy. But she, I mean, she made it that far with zero camera time. Zero. zero. We're just talking about eliminations and roses. When, oh, she got a rose tonight. Oh, great. She's on the show. Yeah. And that's so what that, the... that shocked me. And I mean, same with I, I feel bad, but Mackenzie. I felt like Mackenzie had no part in beating being there this late in the game. I agree. One, she's 21. She's got a kid. Mm -hmm. Chris is 10 years older than her. Yeah. And not only that, Chris sent um, Julia earlier because he knew her story better. You know, and he... I don't think Chris kept Mackenzie for any selfish reasons or anything like that. Um, I think there was a disconnect on that alien date that they had, you know, talking oh. about aliens. What was that about? You just I see how know. Chris was cringing in his seat, but he just, you know, he gave her a chance to, to, to see if she could maybe redeem herself or if that was just one nervous moment by her. But yeah, I mean, ever since then, it just hasn't been, it's just not a right mix for him. And she's just too young, I feel, in that sense. And Obviously, he's looking for a wife that would be willing to move with him, and I just th- don't think her maturity level was anywhere close to the other girls. No, I, I completely agree with you, and um, I mean, it's, it's got to be hard. I can't even imagine being away from a child mm-hmm. on that on that show, especially. Like, man, that's got to be incredibly difficult. But um, I, I just was shocked how far she made it. Yeah. Especially after that alien date, like it's just come on. That's like a, the top five things you don't have a conversation about on the first date, <laughs> right? <laughs> aliens. <laughs> okay, let's cover yeah. that object. I mean, it's supposed like, to be romantic, not yeah. alien. You know, discussion. Like, this was not on my pregame. <laughs> no, definitely not. That is way off, pull off the track and plan. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So going back to the two on one, boy, we're. I don't know who, if this was Chris completely coming up on his own, just trying to feel out these two girls that he wasn't sure about, or was there anything else that just led to them being, but he picked the two most combustible women, <laughs> possibly, in, into a uh, triple date, you know, in a sense, uh, I, trio. You know, I, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of, of that whole, the production and mm-hmm. Chris, but... I just have a slight feeling. I'm really good friends with Chris. There's no possible way he was going to put those two together. I think it wasn't his idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was just, listen, let's put the two most dramatic girls together on one date and let's see what happens. And, like, c- cover yourself with goggles and, and, and wetsuits because it's going to get messy. There's a reason they took him to a desert where there's probably, like, explosives only being tested around yeah. there. There was, like, the most dead place you could ever find you know or go to <laughs> nothing yeah, going like the, on it is it is the exact place where kelsey wants to take someone to hide a bit hide a body pretty hey, much that, let's that's, say that that, that might be part of the gone girl 2 script you have <laughs> no question about Un- unbelievable yeah it was just a weird place to go to and with two very combustible figures that were ready you know the worst thing was i think the loser in that was chris in the sense that they didn't even focus on him it was just like bickering about their own issues they weren't trying to get to know him they were just trying to get one over on each other you know and i think he tried to make something out of this situation you know even in a helicopter or you know with a little alone time he had with each one of them and they just weren't that wasn't their focus, either of them. It was just either getting one of 
the other out of there, you know? And I think yeah. it was just, in a sense, it was a lost date for him because he didn't get to really know anyone. And I think he kind of started seeing Kelsey who, for who she was. And I really didn't think it was even what Ashley had told him. I think he was starting to notice her her approach and attitude. It was just too much to handle. Yeah, I think I think it being so isolated with the three of them and and he finally gets that time with Kelsey. I I, I think it's exactly what you said. He read her like a book. And, mm-hmm. um, I think there were a lot of people watching tonight saying, "Thank God after that after that date." Um, but I, like I say that because I, all we've seen is on TV and right. the way they've been portrayed and in, the, in their in their interviews and the way that they handle. They might be completely different. Maybe yeah. they're just portrayed in that sense, but. Um, they, I mean, like I said before, there's only so much editing that can be done to someone's mm-hmm. personality, and and ultimately your true colors come out. And holy crap, did they come out for Ash and Kelsey? Yeah, <laughs> just, they do. I I thought it was hysterical when Chris got in the, in the helicopter and just and left. I, I'm, <laughs> me, me, me being on the show is trying to figure out how like afterwards, like how they said cut. And, like, how they figured out how to get people back. Like, and they were just, wa- you saw him, like, just, little ants on the ground. He's just getting away. It was like a zombie apocalypse. Like, Chris just <laughs> got away and is leaving him all out there, you know? And they were, like, like, the, 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 ship is, the ship is burning in the background. And, and they're, like, the two last stranded, you know, villains out there that no one's going <laughs> to save, you know? It was just really, I wonder, like, did they get a hold of each other? Because you wouldn't want Ashley and Kelsey after that next right? to each other. Boy, there must have been. I feel like I feel like the producers just said, "Welcome to the Thunderdome," and just like go at it. Yeah, and and then while at uh, back where where all the girls were at, there's like you thought they won the lottery because everyone's popping champagne and drinking. And champagne is a oh, boring it's like a celebration. Happen. It's like I don't think you'd celebrate even if you guys won a championship with your basketball team. You know, it's the way they <laughs> no. celebrated. I mean, it was no, just like, on to the next one. Yeah, there was just hardcore yeah. celebrations all over. But um, obviously the major drama is going to be behind us now from this point, and I think it's getting serious. Um, I think all these girls are strong contenders, and, and you could pretty much visualize majority of them ending up with Chris at this point. I, I think there's certain favorites, uh, but I think everyone is – there's pr- some pretty strong contenders left. I, I think everyone is, is, is fantastic with Chris and could end up with Chris. Um, my viewpoint on it, and I kind of just have a uh, inside opinion, sure. but I think they're hyping his relationship up with Becca. I'm not Becca Britt mm-hmm. too much now, and I, I think that's why I don't think I don't think she ends up with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because they always they focus on it, and the girls have focused on it, and I mm-hmm. just I don't think that's going to carry on for another four episodes. And, yeah, um, I so I, I I I see someone coming out of like the shadows and, and being a front runner after next week. So um, that's just my, my, my sure. point because I, I know at, at this point in the game before hometowns, if someone's con- really considered a front runner or a favorite, they don't typically end up winning. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you know what? I, I think Britta sweetheart, I'm not a fan of her. She's not, she's not my type. Let's just say that. Does she remind you of a female version of Nick Vale <laughs> in a sense? Semi. 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 Dude, semi. I got that vibe about it. You know, that kind of a, oh, I just didn't do anything. And then, you know, like, they're on the inside. They're just, like, you know, completely, like, having a huge <laughs> grin, but playing it off and, you know, trying to be all cool about it and, you know, kind of isolated. I think now with Kelsey gone, I think she's going to be the one that's going to be a bit isolated from the rest of the house. Uh, it seems like it. Yeah, and uh, that – is pretty much the purpose of the show is, is you weed out the people um, that are, aren't there for the right reasons. And mm-hmm. like when, when Kelsey and Asher are gone, now it's like a finer line and who's going to trip over that line now. And it's, I think, I think you're right. I think it's going to be Brett. I, I think her personality rubs everybody else the wrong way. And, and some, sometimes those people that rub everybody else the wrong way think it's not their fault mm-hmm. um, or they couldn't, they can't help it, but that's, there's a reason why. And, yeah. Um, and that's what ha- that what ha- that's what happened with Nick in Belgium, and that's what happened leading up to it. It's just he rubbed us the wrong way off camera, and then 
we found everybody else found out about it on camera, and, and it was pretty um, unanimous. You know, you can fool one person, but if you're fooling a group and you're all yeah, around the same person, yeah. then there's something to be said for that. You know, because you know you can disagree with one 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 guy or girl, but when you have an entire group bonding over something, then you know something's off. You know, and exactly. it's just that it's just the approach. You know, in the sense of when we watch Nick on the season, sense it was like this. You know, it was an arrogance, but also a bit of like showmanship and kind of, you know, like nothing to, nothing ever felt so honest and real, you know, with him. You just yeah. always doubted something, you know, as I felt you and Marcus and Chris were always like 100% genuine and, and Josh too, you know, and then with Nick, there was always like, you know, he would say things like, well, I've watched all these seasons and this and this happened. It's like almost like a strategy, you know, how to yeah. win instead of, you know, winning someone's heart. It's like how to win the show, you know, yeah. there's a difference. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a girl or maybe it's even Brett on their, on their season that any chance you have to talk to another girl off camera, they might be talking about the show and what they think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Us, like Chris, Dylan, and I, we only, and Josh, we only talked about our families, where we came from, what we, like, want to do with the rest of our lives, what's our passion. We really got to know each other. Nick only talked about strategy. and only mm-hmm. Or, or let's just say this, like, if the, all the guys were together and we're bonding, we're having a beer, we're, there's no camera, no mics, and it was us hanging out, Nick would be off talking to a producer by himself. So it kind of, like, yeah. rubbed us the wrong way. And I think that's what happened with Kelsey, and I think that's happening with Brett. I think mm-hmm. when you're off camera, it that means so much more than what America sees on camera. Right. I think everybody, all these girls are getting the inside story on who these girls are, and America is seeing who, like, they want America to see. It's like Brett is showing America who... She thinks America will love. Mm-hmm. Or same with Kel- same with Kelsey, and same with Ashley. I. And, um, that's the reason why I didn't get much. Dylan, Dylan, and I didn't get much camera time all throughout the season until later, is because we weren't those people, right? Like, that were t- talking strategy in interviews or talking strategy outside. We were just like, hey, let's get to know each other. And if if you end up with her, I'm going to be proud as hell. And if I end up with her, I hope you would be the same way. And yeah, I think. These most of the girls, some of them, there's you can tell that you know what, like if you end up with her, I can't complain. It's it's Chris's decision at the end. You know, I mean, there's something about it comes to feelings. You know, and I think the people that have the best image or the best portrayal are ultimately the people that are thinking more along for the Bachelor Bachelorette. Like it's this is their season. It's not ours. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, like if I'm the person ending up with her, fantastic. Or if she's the person ending up with Chris, fantastic. But ultimately, it's Chris is the reason why Chris is the bachelor for a reason, right? And he he needs someone to make him happy and to end up with Chris. And um, you you really got to be unselfish, but selfish at the same time. It, it's 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 really hard to do. It's a hard but, dynamic, yeah. Yeah, but I think that's the key to to at this point in the game. Like, there's what six left i don't know how many are left, right but about that Six, yeah seven. and you really have to be thinking what's best for chris mm-hmm. and, and, and is becca or jade in iowa the best thing for chris or is whitney or caitlin so it's mm-hmm. i think that's going to start showing in this in next week's double header if you right say. especially the hometowns <laughs> hometowns should say a lot you know meeting the family and meeting chris's family i think that's gonna really help him not only to make a decision but it's gonna give them a perspective like whoa this is the real life that i'm about to enter and it's a lot to be said that i'm actually glad that they're doing these dates that they're not going to these exotic locations they're going to locations that are similar to what you could get used to in a sense in in iowa and that you know, it's the life, it's all about the life. This show's on for a few months, you know, you film, you were there for for a few months, but then there's a whole lifetime ahead of you, you know, and if you pick the right person or the wrong one, that affects everything, you know, you got to think about oh, the future, because the life's not going to be the same, you're not going to have fancy, you know, champagne parties and, and, you know, trips and stuff like that, it becomes a real life after the show, and you need to be with someone that really embraces that. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I, it breaks my heart to see Andy and Joss the way they ended up, but mm-hmm. um, it is, it's so hard afterwards, it, it's really hard, and it's its hard for couples after they win it, it's also hard for other c- contestants, I know, like, 
point, like I know firsthand, it, it's tough after the show, but mm-hmm. um, I think Chris is going to pick a girl that he, he knows without a doubt is going to stick by him regardless after the show and who can handle someone who can handle it because right. he went on the sh- he went on the show and he dealt with he dealt with post show traumatic disorder pretty much um, and it, she, he's gonna obviously pick someone who can handle that and, mm-hmm. uh, I, I hope it's a good one because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be at the wedding <laughs> well yeah you guys are close you know <laughs> you have that bond with him too so <laughs> hopefully yeah and I, I really do have a feeling that Chris is gonna ultimately find someone because if you're in it ultimately for the right reasons I think you're gonna get to that point where you know you know in that sense that you just that person whoever's involved in this situation just knows who's the right one and it's gonna overcome you know there's no if there's genuine intentions you know, unlike the Juan Pablo season when there's completely different <laughs> intentions. Uh, and I'm I'm rooting for Chris, and I'm, I'm hoping he really does um, find the one, you know. And, and the thing is, one thing I always kind of look back, and compared to your season with Andy, is that Andy got a great crop of guys. You know, in general, majority of you guys were really solid guys. They were there for the right reasons, you know, that were looking for for a long-term relationship and someone to meet, you know, and as opposed to certain seasons where you have a lot of different bad apples or people who might not be there for the right reasons. I felt like your group, and it might show why you've bonded with a lot of these guys, you know, is that you guys were genuine good guys to begin with. And I think, and I I always say, I think Andy did a damn good job uh, leading up to the top four, top five, Mm -hmm. um, when we got eliminated, I, I thought she did a great job. All those guys I was with, I thought would would make a great husband for Andy. So, some of them less than some mm-hmm. others, but overall, I just I, I look back at the entire group of guys. And I'm like, man, that the top six guys like would have done anything for that girl. And I think I think Chris is going to have the same turnout. I think these girls that he uh, narrows it down to, um, I could probably say the same thing about. Yeah. And then, like you mentioned, the next two weeks, there's going to be a back-to-back. There's a lot of stuff going to happen on those uh, those two shows. <laughs> I'm saying right now, I'm going to consume a lot of wine. On <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, you know? It's going to be brutal. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on. As, as you said, there's going to be some things with Brit. I think, that we're finally going to end up seeing now that uh, other distractions are out of the house. And uh, it's going to be the pivotal point, I think, approaching these next two episodes in, in the season where things are going to go and, and really kind of give you a good idea. Yeah, it's, I think Sunday and Monday are going to be the episodes. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, n- now we see who Chris is really narrowing it down to. And um, I, I have my favorites. I, I, I haven't paid attention to any spoilers, so mm-hmm. I told Chris I would. I've been too. I haven't uh, looked yeah. at anything. It just gives these conversations like this a genuine, exciting feel to it because you don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like it's like I don't I don't like color commentating a game that I already know the outcome. Right. Of, so it's just, <laughs> it just defeats the purpose. You know, yeah, you can't be honest exactly. about it. What did you think about the revelation that they ended the clip on the promo for next week about Jade being in, in Playboy doing, uh, I mean, that's a girl you wouldn't think of all these things, you know, we were saying how, you know, how sweet she is, that'd be such a, you know, you would never think about her being the oh, one. Exactly, and um, I heard the rumor uh, before I met her, mm-hmm. and I told myself, you know what, I'm not going to, like, check it out, I, I don't want to, like, I don't want to have an opinion about her before I even meet her. Right. Um, and I did not expect her to meet her on the premiere, the night before the premiere. And when I met her, I'm like, how the hell <laughs> like, did this girl end up in that situation? She is the kindest girl I've ever met. She's shy. She's so nice. Um, and I feel like people are going to end up judging her and when they don't even know right. about her. And they don't know her story. They don't know like what happened and, and everything. So... People make mistakes when they're younger, too. You know, sometimes they wish they wouldn't do. Absolutely. Um, But I I did that for a reason. I'm proud. I'm proud I I did do that because she's a great girl. And, um, you know, it's... I can't speak any highly of her. She's fantastic. And I think if Chris decides she is the one, 
I don't think that's going to be that much of a factor if he thinks she can be a solid wife and someone that he could live with for the rest of his life. You know, I don't think, you know, everyone makes mistakes when they were younger. It's not even a horrible thing. She didn't commit a crime or anything, you know. No. Uh, no. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. There's no doubt about it, you know, um, with a great body and, and all that. So you can't fault her at whatever point in her life to do that. I don't think it takes away anything from who she is. I just hope yeah. the house doesn't... Uh, kind of leech onto her over it and make her, you know, seem unworthy, you know, for doing something like that. Yeah, and, you know, I, I mean, I know the interview process, and I know <laughs> the mm -hmm. casting process, and there's no way in hell they did not know about it oh, yeah. before they cast her. So they kind of, my belief is that they knew about it, so they threw her on, now they want to, like, reveal it, and they picked a certain time in the process, and the whole trip to, to reveal it um i bet ultimately she, i mean it was in the back of her mind she didn't know when she was going to bring it up and, and now it obviously comes up the week before the hometown dates and mm -hmm. um everybody has a past like right. i always say that, like everybody has a moment in their life where they regret but it, ultimately it got her to this point and it it, it, it made it, it made it's made who it made her who she is today and um I think that's a great girl. So I, sure. I, I'm not going to judge her on it. Obviously, people are going to be quick, hot of the gates too. And um, it's not like she did pornography, right? She, and she did like she. And you know what? It's not like she's a bad girl and she she flaunts it and she tells everybody. It's like a part of her life that she's not proud of. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, but she so, deserves to move on from too. You know exactly. So right. I, I, I'm not going to hold it against her, obviously, and um, I hope the other girls don't either, and, and hopefully America doesn't, or Chris. I yeah. think she would be fantastic for Chris. I, I believe so too. I think, and I think, judging from what we've seen from Chris so far, I, I think he wouldn't hold it against her either. It just seems like you know there's more to him that he's looking for than someone just doing something that it wasn't even harmful, you know, just something in the past to judge for. Because if we were all judged for what we've done in the past, or, you know, everyone would have major flaws even bigger than that. So. Hey, I, I stripped I stripped down to my underwear on stage in front of thousands of women, so am I going to be judged on that? We forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> couple more things um, before we, we finish up here. Uh, sure. Brian, what have you been up to since since the show? I mean, how has how has it changed your life in a sense? Are you getting more dates now, or you know, <laughs> going out like, whoa, it's Brian? Yeah, you know, I I came home and I had no idea um, the reaction I was gonna get at all. I had no idea. One, I didn't know. I didn't. One, I had no idea I was gonna make it past night one. <laughs> I was just like <laughs> telling myself, please make it past night one because I'll be embarrassed for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to make it as far as I did. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get the portrayal I got mm -hmm. throughout the show. And I came home and I was welcomed with open arms from by everybody in, in Pennsylvania, really. Um, Harrisburg's small. Harrisburg's not a yeah. Boston, not a Boston, not a Chicago, not a, a, a Dallas. So I came home and uh, you couldn't, I couldn't stop at a stoplight without being noticed. And hmm. everybody who I, I ran into who noticed me, had very very kind words so i i am blessed and i'm very fortunate for uh the way harrisburg has reacted to me at being on the show um when it comes to dates uh i haven't really gone on many dates because um it's hard to find someone genuine after the show yeah it's so true it, it's either like a past girl or girlfriend that i used to date is now hitting me up or a girl mm. that turned me down in high school is, is, is like, remember me, Brian, from third yeah. grade? Uh, no, yeah. not really. Yeah, I do. You cry, and I'm not talking to you ever again. <laughs> no, it's 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 been tough, and I'm, I've been trying to I've been trying to date, um, but I I'm in basketball season, so right, right now uh, right now I'm in Brian mode. I'm, I'm working, I'm coaching, uh, I'm I'm looking for the next thing to do. Uh, I got into color commentating, TV color commentating. So oh, that's great. And I've really, really enjoyed that. I, I get to color commentate uh, like a basketball high school basketball game of the week. Hmm. Uh, so that's that's been a blast. But I really haven't focused on relationships after the show. I just I got ready for basketball season and work basketball, work basketball. Um, at some point, I'm I'm gonna start focusing on it. And 
hopefully someone at that point is, is going to be genuine enough to, to go out with more than one date. I've gone out on dates. Just right. Ended horribly. Or, like, for instance, the one time I went out, uh, a girl asked for my picture the very first thing that it, that we did. Like, we met up at the restaurant. She asked for my picture. <laughs> like a signed one or something? Or? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh are you God. serious? I was like, oh my god, my, my cousin loves you. I was like, okay, this is not a date. This is like a, yeah. a fan appearance. So it's, I've been trying to take it one week at a time. And I, I, I what I've really enjoyed is I went out to Boston, mm-hmm. uh, visited Dylan, uh, went out to Iowa, obviously, visited Chris. Um, I've hung out with Brett uh, in Philly a couple times. Um, I saw Cody out in Iowa. That was a great, like, I, I've really got to know the guys on the show and, and their hometowns. Um, so I've, the, the most I've taken out of it isn't dates. It's, it's really some really good friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. So, which is uh, uh, irreplaceable in a sense, you know, Yeah, having friends for the rest of your life, you can't, you can't trade that for anything. I, I really can. And I mean, there's a reason and we'll always share bachelorette season 18 or whatever mm-hmm. it was. And, um, I mean, we're going to see each other all the time at some point. We're gonna. So one of us is gonna find a girl that we're gonna consider marrying, and, sure. uh, and we're gonna know if she's the right one because we've gotten to know him so well. And um, I, the guy even told Dylan, and Dylan said the same thing. Like he's probably gonna be in my wedding party, and so is Chris. And um, just because we shared in that five and a half weeks, like you get to know each other on a whole different level. Um, There's no so cell phones I, or anything like that, right? You guys are stripped away nothing, from everything, nothing. TV and. No music. You're, oh like, my never. gosh. <laughs> Forced to talk, literally. Exactly. So it's pretty much like what we've had so far is like 20 years of friendship crammed up into five and a half weeks. And um, So w- whenever I see a girl that I want to kind of date, I always send her, send Dylan like a picture or like a synopsis saying like <laughs> about this girl. And so it's, it's tough. It, it's, it's, it's really hard after the show to date. It really is. Um, Dating's hard to begin with, you know? Oh, oh boy. I, I know. Girls, girls are cray-cray. They <laughs> are. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I mean, personally, I was – basically, I had two relationships in the past decade. Um, I was with one girl for seven years. I was engaged, and I kid you not, I, w- I was out in L.A. doing some things. I came back. Um, we moved in together. Three months later, she was pregnant not with my kid. Imagine that, Brian. So that's a story, you know, in a sense. So Kelsey's got a story. I got a story, you know. So, boy, your story. yeah. So I mean, you come back like, hey, I'm. I got. I had a kid yesterday. No, you didn't. I was with you two days ago. Yeah, I did. Um, why wouldn't I be there for the birth? Oh, because oh, it might God. not be yours. That's a movie script. That was my life. That is that. That is a movie script. That is that's a Maury's conversation. <laughs> that was a Maury's thing. Maury and then you know, I had another yeah. girlfriend right after. You know, I stayed with her, and she unfortunately got a very bad disease. You know, while we started dating, um, it was incurable. I stayed with her, and then just after a year and a half, she told me, you know, I never really loved you. I just kind of uh, liked like being with you because you understood me. Really? For yeah. a year and a half? So now I'm back That's in tough. the dating game, you know, after like a decade literally of all these things. And it's tough, you know, to go on dates and just meet people and, you know, in general. It's just yeah. so difficult. I, it's gotten to the point where I, I honestly believe... The, the moment when you stop trying, that's when it's going to happen. I think so. So I, I, I've literally, like, I've given up. I'm like, I'm done. I can't, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. And I, you know what? I'm having fun with it now. I'm not mm-hmm. really taking it as serious with the whole dating thing. And, um, like I'm hosting charity events and I'm, I'm great. doing a lot of things for, for people that I, I wouldn't have the opportunity to do if I wasn't on the show. So, of course. um, I'm not trying to like be greedy and, and get my 50 and can hold on to my 15 minutes of fame. I just, I like to like help out as, as many people as I possibly can. And if a good girl comes along, then, then you know she's right there for the right reasons, yeah. I mean, I'm personally considering, every time I see a commercials, apply for this season of The Bachelorette, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, maybe I should, you know? I could give you a reference. Oh, that'd be great. I I guess I have a story they can market, in a sense, you know? 100% true. Um, But yeah, I mean, you've done it, so I mean, I'm considering, in a sense, too. It'd be an interesting experience. 
And I, and I, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get the call for Bassler and Pat. Right, I was going to ask you that. That's the next thing I was going to ask you. Any, any thoughts about that? Would you something you would do or? The the only thing that would would get me to do Bachelor in Paradise is the fact that those girls have gone through the same thing I have, mm -hmm. and they're going to be genuine because they have, they can't be anybody else. It's just right. So they're not going to be there. They're not going to be fans. They're going to be people that have gone through the same thing and and dealt with the same, I guess, cons you can say, like with after the show. So um, if if I got the call and I, my my availability was there. I, I might do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a feeling I'm going to be asked just because the fact that I've been asked back for so many shows so far, like uh, after the final rose and then mm -hmm. the finale and then now the premiere uh, being, being asked back. I don't know why you would ask me back on it. So I'm like, <laughs> people right, like you, Brian. <laughs> Trust me. I mean, you know, from watching this show, people all that is, the people I know at least always rooted for you, and, and you know, you were in that group of Marcus, Dylan, and and Chris that everyone just really enjoyed. And I think it's because, and it shows me talking to you now. It, it just shows that you know you're just a regular, real guy, and I think that that says a lot. You know, that for someone who owns who they really are and doesn't try to be something they're not, and you know, and you're genuine and appreciate things. So I think that resonates with people really. Yeah. And like I, I, I said to, to a lot of people, and the way you can sum up, like me or Dylan, is like we're not gonna we're not gonna meet you out when something that's going wrong, and out to, to like a bar just because you, you need someone there. Well, mm -hmm. we're gonna be that guy that you always call because you need to go out and and like to get a beer and have a conversation. Right. It's like like who's gonna be that one guy who will have a conversation? It's Brian and Dylan, and it's it, it, it's not the way you can sum us up, but it's just like. That's who we were the entire time on the show. It's just like, who can we have a normal conversation with instead of talking about the show right. or talking to producers or worrying about what's going to happen next? Like, we we could just, part of my language, but we could just shoot the shit with people. Right. And, it's, and, and that's, that's the honest truth about Dylan and I. And when we went out, when I went out to Boston and when he came here to visit me in Harrisburg, um, we would just be those guys that, like, walking down the street and look completely normal and what we people will come up to us and be like, hey you're brian and dylan from the show right yeah sure and they're like get a picture with us and we're like hey come on in we'll, we'll buy you guys a beer like that's how dylan and i were and um we're just those normal guys that are going to be next door that you can call over to have pizza and, and watch a really bad reality tv show so <laughs> that's, that's that's you need <laughs> so, those people you know right? can't never have enough of those <laughs> And we're, fan we're fantastic wedding dates. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hopefully it transforms into something for you guys later exactly. on. Exactly. But that's a good so thing. If Dylan, if Dylan gets back, asked back on in Paradise, I mm -hmm. can guarantee it I'm going. <laughs> yeah, well, you have your buddy there. And I there was a little, you know, Dylan did it. And, and then Cody, a few of yeah. you guys, and Markel, there was a little reunion yeah. there last season. Exactly. But I, yeah, I think Dylan feels the same way. It, the only reason why we'd go back on it is, is to find – Someone who's gone through the same thing we have, and it's it's yeah. kind of like just it's kind of like celebrities dating celebrities, just because they they're they're going through the same thing. They understand each other, you know. Yeah, so that that's really the only attraction I have to, to going on in paradise. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I coach I coach at a Catholic high school, so it's kind of like. The, the image I, I feel pretty good about right now, right. so I don't, I don't want Bachelor in Paradise to have an effect on um, my job and, and my passion for coaching. Your career, so, uh, you know, that's what yeah. matters first and foremost. Exactly, so um, I have confidence in myself that I could go on in Paradise and I could do it for the right reasons, And um, but I, I mean, if let's just say if hypothetically... Becca, Jade, and Caitlin end up in Paradise. I I'll be going out. there also myself. I'm, <laughs> I'm, to I'm totally sold. <laughs> Who wouldn't be? That's that's a really good mix there too. I was just thinking about it. These girls, if they don't make it, at least few of them won't. But they should be on that show next. Yes, yeah, sign me up if those two, if those three go on. Oh my okay. gosh, I better be auditioning for this season. <laughs> There's a tape coming up somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, it's, it's been cool so far, mm -hmm. but it's. A lot of people don't understand how, how difficult it is after the show, so it's... Yeah, back I, to reality, I, you know, in a sense. Yeah, I appreciate you, you understanding. A lot of people don't.
No, it's definitely. And finally, you know, I wanted to just ask you, how's the basketball season going? How's your team? Uh, <laughs> Want to share anything of that? What are you coaching them up with? Yeah, we're, uh, well, I'm a I'm varsity assistant right now. I'm actually coaching underneath uh, my head coach when I was there. So oh, wow. He's been there for 35 plus years, and it's pretty much the best resume builder I could possibly have. But, right. Uh, I'm the JV head coach, and our, my team is 19 and one. So I can't damn, make- you guys are doing work. <laughs> yeah, wow. and uh, varsity's now getting ready for districts, and uh, it's fun. It, it's really fun. The, the guys love the show, and they love uh, just seeing me on it. And they're, they're big fans, and they love me going to other schools. And the girls at the other schools are like. Eating up, they're like, oh my god, like your coach is Brian. Your coach is Brian. Oh my god, let me give me your, your my phone number. <laughs> well, goes, look at you parlaying your own yeah. experience into oh, everyone oh, dates. My, my players are eating it up. Oh, and that's great. It's, it's hysterical, but the basketball season is going well, and mm-hmm. um, we'll see what happens this summer. And in the spring, I might be helping out with track. I ran some track in college, okay. so I might I might be helping out there. And, and this is the high school you went to, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up. Um, it's right in Camp Hill, uh, well, right outside of Harrisburg, and mm-hmm. good, good Catholic school. And so I, I kind of tried. I had them in the back of my mind when I was on the show, so I, I, I felt like it, it did me very, very good justice. And um, we'll see what happens. I, I love this t- the TV color commentating gig, and that, that's a great time. And. That's something you can definitely, you know, delve into and expand upon, you know, doing like these little podcast stuff, always an experience, you know, to yeah, have you talking cool. more and, and be opening up and all that. And I think you have the personality to definitely do it. And, <laughs> and you know, the passion, you have the passion for the game. No question, you know, no, yeah, for the game of basketball. I, 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 my dad played in college and he had me, he had me with a little basketball and a Fisher Price hoop and I was about two years old. So. Were you dunking on that thing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> easily. Yeah, I, was, I, was like, I was lighting it up. It's, uh, awesome. it's, it's funny because the, one of the most popular questions I always get asked is, uh, like, did you really, like, hit that half-court shot? Or was that, was that, like, set up? No, I, I really hit that half-court shot. I believe uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably and, practice uh, it every day after practice, shooting oh, some half-court shots, you know. Yeah. For, for being around basketball courts as, as often as I am, everybody knows you practice that shot all the time. Oh, yeah. So I, I, when, when Andy asked me to do it, I was like, do you know what you're getting yourself into here? This is going <laughs> in, by the way, yeah. just so you just know. Just so you know. Did you not see that game? Uh, yeah. And uh, it was funny because I, I look back, I look on this season, there's been a lot of group dates, and, um, but some of the producers will always say like that that group date was so geared towards me more mm-hmm. than any, uh, any other group date that they've ever had. And I was like, man, I'm I am so lucky to have that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I felt bad for all those guys, honestly. Maybe Josh, because he was an athlete too, but you were taking him just like to school all of them, you know, in yeah, a it sense. Was, it was a bloodbath. Let's just say that. It, it was, was fun. Bloodbath. It was a lot of fun, and my players to this day they 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 love tease me about it, and um, some of the students like I'm, I'm hosting a uh, like a man pageant with a Mister like schools for a thon event so now they're like making all these team rosebuds signs and, <laughs> and it's yeah it's I, it's fun you know I, I enjoy the humor and i'm one of those guys that can take criticism and humor with the, with the same kind of mm-hmm. head on the shoulder so that's the best all approach that, you know yeah, it really all is this positive stuff i've gotten some negative stuff but it, it's something that doesn't bother me and i knew that was going to come yeah but uh doing this kind of stuff this podcast i enjoy it and i think well, what you do is fantastic and I give you props. You're, you're a dude talking about The Bachelor. Imagine that. And, you know, yeah, everyone asks me, how did I get into it? This is like a 29-year-old guy. How do you get into The Bachelor? Well, I, one of my exes, one day, you know, she's like, hey, can you watch The Bachelor with me? Why? Well, I'm like, Monday Night Football, there's like WWE, that's how <laughs> I, I might want to watch those. Oh, because my girlfriend's, came. okay, I watch one week, turn into two, turn into five, turn into seven. By the end of the season, this was one Pablo season. I knew more than her and her girlfriends <laughs> combined, you know? And at that point, they're like, yeah, you should probably write about this or talk about this. That's a good idea. So I pitched a blog to, like, the Tribune. They own a site called the Chicago Now, the, the um, Chicago Tribune. And I remember doing an interview because they were so skeptical of me actually, like, really? Do you know about The Bachelor's? So they did a phone interview, 
after two minutes, she's like, you can have the blog. I've never heard anyone know more about The Bachelor than <laughs> that's even great. So that's how I got involved. And it's really been a passion project. You know, I don't get awesome. any benefits out of this or anything. I just do it every week. I write about it and talk about it because, it's a, you know, it's a great show. And, it, you know, I, I'm a hopeless romantic myself, you know, and I, it's like it's cool to see these yeah. things and try to visualize yourself possibly getting that chance or, you know, finding that someone. And if you've been through heartbreak, you kind of know, you know, what it's like oh, exactly. to – to appreciate all these things and trying to find the right one. So, yeah, I've been doing this f uh, for a while now since uh, since the summer. So I'm so glad you joined. You know, I would love well, to I, have you I, on. I, I tip my hat to you. So <laughs> That's why I do it. I just want people to read about it and check out because there's such a huge fan base for the show, you know. And I know a lot of my demographics like 18 to 49-year-old women, but that's cool with me because I can definitely talk to them about it. Uh, but great great for you to join me i really appreciate you taking Absolutely. out your time if you if you ever want to do this if you want to keep it going uh, you're more than welcome anytime you know just so much more exciting to talk to someone that's been through this experience and can yeah. relate to it and and i'm sure everyone's going to enjoy listening to it that's great you know what hey if you ever need me to come back and um talk more uh i'll be happy to absolutely um, brian we, good, it was a good time Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anytime, I'll reach out to you so uh, we can even make this a weekly thing if you have some time. We don't have to go an hour deep. We can go much shorter since yeah. it's the first time I got a chance to talk to you, but we can definitely do this. And, you know, uh, I'm so glad you're able to do it and practice your commentary, you know? Yeah. Just bachelor style <laughs> in this sense. It's, it's awesome, baby. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks for your time. I'm just going to no close problem. the podcast now with uh, this was Brian the coach joining me today on episode six of the bachelor universe podcast back at it next week potentially with brian uh we'll see how that goes so we'll fit it, fit, see if the schedule fits and um i'll talk to you guys later so check out my blog it should be posted sometime tomorrow until next week craziness in bachelor land <laughs>